particular? Of course, um, you know, every year we like to present some of the finest cars that we, we have available in the Canadian market and the Wyra, the wind of God. Um, I believe Richard had a lot of uh, a lot of time behind the seat of a coupe specifically, if I'm not mistaken, but it's Horatio Pagani's masterpiece. I mean, this is the second generation Pagani. Uh, the first was the Zonda that everybody knows famously, and most recently been uh, been succeeded by, not by performance, but succeeded by the uh, Utopia, which unfortunately we don't have here this year. You guys can ab um, absolutely expect one to see one next year. But everything made out of carbon titanium on the, on the top of these vehicles, everything is hand built, limited to about 35 cars that they produce annually carbon body I mean every every single car that we have here is a full carbon body uh, uh, vehicle it, it's an option that you can get through Pagani but typically you could also get it painted but I mean I can go into detail for days and days on these things every nut and bolt is made out of titanium there's what a hundred thousand euro worth of nut and bolts alone on the Chris table. tell me about the ailerons or the flaps back here speed brakes downforce active arrow what goes on at the back of the car all of the above I guess I mean yes it's active arrow so depending upon how you're utilizing the car the wings on the front of the car as well as on the rear of this specifically will adjust depending upon the performance or what you're trying to achieve if you're cornering the left side might go up as you're going through a right-hander to really help keep the car settled under brake and of course they active uh, they become very active much like other brands similar to uh, with similar systems uh, right behind us here as well. One of the things I've always loved about uh, approaching a Pagani up close is everything is, is state-of-the-art, very fut futuristic, but then there's lovely little sort of old-school analog touches like a leather strap here holding the uh, holding the bonnet down. Remember that Horatio Pagani is an artisan. I mean, he, he, he lives off of, you know, a lot of the vision that he saw from Leonardo da Vinci to you know, what what attracts him in his eyes, you take a little bit of attention to detail, as you mentioned, like the leather straps you get from vintage race cars, to a lot of the dials on the inside of the car, which is very similar to a um, an airplane, and then the mirrors, which were inspired by his wife, Christina, and her eyes as he was looking at her one evening and wanted to be um, insanely romantic. Maybe it was on Valentine's Day yesterday, I don't know, but that was a, that was one of the inspirations that he came forward. Richard, with. that's a power move. Uh, what do Mindy's eyes look like? Absolutely. So I live in Malibu, so 
not uncommon to see Pagani's on Sunday morning ripping up the, uh, ripping up the road. What a glorious Sunday night, but the presentation of this is fantastic. That's spectacular. It's just a joyous uh, what else do we have over here? This one looks even more wicked. This doesn't exactly look street legal, or is it? You're right. It, it is not. This is probably more in your wheelhouse. Uh, this is the Zonda R. It was the first race car produced by Pagani. Uh, this car dates back to 2012. It was the one and only Pagani Wire, uh, sorry, Pagani Zonda R to come in the country. Since its uh, arrived in Canada, it's actually gone through facelifts, so we've done a little bit more of the revo, the revolution aspect to it, so you can see a lot more cameras on the front end of the vehicle, a much more aggressive rear end of the car as well, um, suspension updates. Uh, this is a one off, very bespoke uh, variant of the line, of the Zonda R, called the Liquid. But a track toy. It is solely track toy, yeah. So I've been fortunate to actually drive this car in uh, Fuji. Not Fuji, oh, not really? but it's here in Los Angeles. I just had, had my first experience there uh, a few weeks ago, actually, in Japan. And uh, suggested retail price. I think market value would be looking at north of $6 million. Good. Yeah. Great. All right. Terrific. Well, we'll get to the McLaren stuff in just a bit, and uh, I just want to take are there any, any questions from our uh, esteemed journalists here in the crowd while we have a couple of minutes. Anybody have a question for Richard or for Chris regarding Pagani? Awesome. We've answered all your questions. Oh, well, we got one. Yes, sir. Uh, does he have a particular favorite? Hey, Richard, do you have a favorite Pagani in particular? Um, I'd have to go for the Roadster. Because the, just the glamour, the fun, the comedy, the entertainment, the pantomime of it, I think if you're in a position to be able to own and drive such a thing, you're doing the world a favor by parading in the back. I think it should be subsidized by the state, really, to do it. It's a public service driving that thing around for the benefit of everyone. I don't really think that. It's a privilege, absolutely. Well, Chris, thank you very much for sharing these with us, and thank you for bringing these to the auto show. I gotta tell you, uh, like any, Young kid, these are the kinds of cars that were on, on my posters, you know, uh, back in the day. Sasha or Tesla Rosa today, it's a Pagani. And this show is special because of these kinds of vehicles. And I don't think I've ever seen in the four or five years of it coming here this amount of eye candy. Uh, it's a great job. So thanks for having us.